Hi, Captain Mike here with you again on a, uh, a tutorial on pouring slip into some of the plaster molds that we made. Uh, I received a request from uh, someone who watched one of my videos and she asked me to do this. Uh, Maria, uh, this uh, video is for you. She was particularly interested in the bowls, probably this one, which was the one of my I featured in the earlier video. Uh, there was also a larger bowl, but this is the this is the mold, the big bowl we made uh, with the stainless steel bowl. We're going to cast that today. We're going to cast the straight-sided uh, votive. We're going to cast the dragonfly that we did. And the little sun, moon face, whatever. And I'll also cast one of these uh, smaller bowls in case that's what she was interested in. They have a lot of applications. Uh, now those are all just bowls that you pour stuff in and, and, and it's all done the same way, but you're kind of looking at what you do. What we have here, and we're gonna pour one of those, is what's called a, um, a clamshell mold, but it's a, it's a, it casts a 3D model all the way around. And this happens to be of a little fox. So it comes in two parts. That's the front. This is the back. And of course, they must be real clean around here. And you put it together. And this is also plaster. So uh, it works the same way. And the way these plaster molds work is by absorbing the water out of the clay mix or slip if you will. So you have to put these together with rubber bands, big special made rubber bands for this to keep the uh, uh, the slip from coming out. Now if you don't really know what slip is, I don't know what level we're working with here, so if you don't know what slip is, get online, look it up. It's a, it's a, it's a, a clay slurry. Real thin uh, buttermilk consistency, I, I would imagine, and you pour it into the cavity that you want to, to cast, and it uh, the, the, the plaster absorbs the water, and it, the, uh, when, you, you know, when, when you pour out the excess, it begins to dry, and it forms a shell. Uh, I'm not going to give you a great big uh, lesson on uh, this stuff. On, on, on this on slip, but it comes in a box like this. You can see it. This is a, this is a, where I get mine, and it comes in a bag. This happens to be terracotta, but you can see that consistency. Now, out of this box, you don't have to worry about it. You just put it in whatever you're going to transfer it from and you're good to go. We don't have to add anything. As it sits in the box, it gets sometimes gets uh, uh, thick, and you can add water to a certain degree and uh, a chemical called sodium silicate. Now, I'm not gonna tell you anything more about that other than get online, check out thinning out slip, working with slip, and uh, they'll tell you more about it. I may do a video later on it, but right now we're just going to assume that you have some slip and that you want to pour it in these molds that you just made. Uh, you probably already know what I'm going to show you, but we're going to go with that, okay? So I'll be right back with the slip and we'll pour it in here. Okay, we've got the slip poured. Now, a couple of tips that we do is that uh, little five gallon bucket right there it's what I put my slip in. It has got what's a bee honey gate on it. I'm going to do a video later on how to make one of those. But right now, I uh, I put all my slip in that so I can work with it. And then I use usually the, the silver container to uh, pour smaller things out of. Today, since we've got a lot of molds, I've got that plastic tea thing. And right here is a lifesaver. When I pour the slip from the five gallon bucket into the containers that I'm going to pour from, I strain it. You see all them lumps? Now those will break down, but that's just lumps that didn't break down when I stirred it up. So we're going to get into the uh, pouring of these molds now. So 
Let me get back around here, get rid of some of this stuff. All right, we're gonna start with this one right here first, okay? Uh, and what you do is you just pick up your, I'll probably make a mess, okay? So this, hopefully there's some comedy in this. Maybe not. Just kind of pour it in slow. Don't get in a real big hurry. Just let it dribble on in. Pour up to the very top. Now, you'll have to re-pour this again, uh, just a little bit. This will shrink down, as is with all of these, but this will shrink down a little bit. We're going to pour this one, and just pour it on up to the top. Don't worry about it if you run over, sometimes you do. And we're going to pour this cup right here. Maria, I didn't know which one you wanted, but this is, this is, hopefully we'll cover it. Now we're going to pour our little sun face, moon face, whatever kind of little face. And you're going to kind of over pour it because you're going to trim it up. And it's the same with the uh, dragonfly here. We'll pour it all the way up and wait until it shrinks back a little, re-pour it if it needs it. And uh, do whatever we, whoops, <laughs> see, that's what happens sometimes. You get kind of, you kind of get carried away. But don't worry, this is all water soluble. You can scrape it off. It'll usually just peel right back. Okay, that's all we're going to do for right now. Uh, we're going to sit. let this sit for just a little bit. Soak up. I'll refill, and I'll show you that. And then uh, we'll have to set them aside and let them... Uh, uh, congeal around the edges and I'll explain all that to you and that'll be the last step before we pour it out and let it sit and we're gonna do this re-pour real quick the rest of them have, have, have shrunk up a little bit but not much but this will just give you some idea especially on these um, 3d type molds you can see it's, it's dropped down the pour hole about an inch it means it soaked up that much water now, it'd probably be okay if you didn't do this, but everybody does. They just top it off. Probably once is all you really have to do it. And depending on what you do with these other molds, uh, you may not even have to top them off. Uh, I probably top the uh, dragonfly off just a little bit. Uh, and we'll just go ahead and do them all. It's pretty close to lunch, and uh, I'll leave them here while I eat and 30 45 minutes to an hour should be a gracious plenty for them to uh, absorb as much of the water as they're going to absorb you can leave them here until they just about dry up and you've got walls that are very thick but that's not the way we want to do it so i'll come back in a little while and i'll go to the next step and explain to you what we have and why we have it. And we'll pour this one out. And lastly, we'll pour out the dragon. Now, the uh, things like this dragonfly here, you can, if you don't want just a shell, you can just sit here, let it sit here until all the slip that you've put in there has basically turned solid, make a nice thick dragonfly or butterfly or whatever even this little this little deal right here uh depends on what you want all that's left now is that we let these sit here until they dry enough to start to turn loose uh, i usually let them sit there till they're, till they're till they will pop out on their own by that i mean you will turn this upside down and it'll come right out and then you'll set it aside and let it harden completely. Uh, but we'll be back when I unmold these and then we'll explain the next step after that. Okay, these things have, uh, have dried enough, I think, for, so we can unmold them and they should come out just fine. We will go ahead and start with this one right here, okay? That's the one that Maria wanted to see, I think. And boom, it comes right out just like that. Pop it. Okay. And it's still kind of 
you could mash it around so we don't want to touch it too much and let it dry. The next one we'll take out is this big one right here and it just falls right out. There you go. And it unmolded that one. And let's try this one right here. Wow, they fall out so easy. So easy. And you can see that one right there. And we'll do the old dragonfly. And it fell right out. It's got some bad spots right there, but you can clean them out. That's no problem. You set the, see the dragonfly? It'll be a ceramic dragonfly. And the last is this 3D mold right here. Let's just see what we got. All right, you take those off. And it just comes right apart like that. And you get to take out the little rascally raccoon. Boom, that's it. I take it and just take this off right here. You can cut it off with a knife if you want to. Set it down like that. I oh, will get a little closer to the camera. There you go. And you let them dry. And, oh, got one more. How about that? Getting ahead of myself. And there's my little sun face. Okay. So, that's them. We're going to let them sit there overnight. Tomorrow morning, they will be leather hard. We can trim them up a little bit, get some of the rough edges off. And then again, you let them sit until they uh, completely dry out. Then you can finish the sanding on them or whatever blemishes you want to get rid of. And uh, from there, get them ready to put in the kiln. But that's the unmolding. Okay, we've let these things sit uh, overnight. They have become leather hard. So I thought I'd just kind of show you uh, um, what they look like and um, sort of uh, what they can look like when they're fired. There's my little raccoon right there. And you can see to the uh, left is the uh, one that has been bisque. The one on the right has been... Uh, uh, fired it's a raccoon and then there's the little uh, the little moon faces sun faces and again that's uh, fired and uh, um, uh, bisque and then raccoon and the little bowl same with it the big bowl I don't have an example it's a brand new mole and same with this little votive right here and the same with the little firefly so okay we've uh, all we've got to do now is trim them up and let them sit until they get uh, as hard as we want them and it's real simple at this stage right here they're still just a tad soft but if you like you can take a knife and you can go around them very easy. Easier fact to do it this way or maybe uh, midday. Uh, we've got a little wind today. They'll dry out very fast. So you have to kind of keep an eye on how they're drying because uh, you don't want them. This is just a little soft, but it's uh, you don't want them too hard. So you just go around them and you can trim them off at this state. And if they've got any little imperfections that you want to get out, you take your finger and just kind of rub them. Uh, and it's the same with the bowls. You can actually on the bowls, I wait until they're hard, and then I take a piece of sandpaper and I do them like that, and it flattens the top and it flattens the bottom. And then you can take a knife and go around them, uh, and you can also get the uh, imperfections. But this is a good time right now to decorate your your things. If you say you want to put inscribe some stuff right here between now and when it passed leather hard before just before it starts to get chalky, uh, you can you can you can draw on them, do whatever you want to do on them, make your make your imprints into them.
okay, and uh, decorate them. Some people do that, some people don't. And it's the same with, with uh, Junior here. Uh, you, when he's uh, uh, a little bit harder, it's just a little soft now because he's thick. These lines right here can be just, you know, you can take a, even after he has become hard, you can take a, a knife, an exacto knife, and you can take those little those mold marks right off and sand them. Uh, right now, he's just a little bit too mushy to do that. But once that's, you, you get to this point, all that's left is letting them dry completely, then put them in the mold, I mean in the kiln, fire them, till you get bisque, and then put the glaze of your type on them, and fire them again, and then you've got, you've got uh, your stuff. There's your little raccoon. All right, folks, that's it for how to, how I pour slip into my little homemade molds, plus this one store-bought mold. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope it was informative. Thank you.